Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. Today, we have with us uh, from St. Louis, um, Dr. Mitchell Levine. Dr. Levine, say hello. Hey, how are you guys? Thanks, Patrick. I appreciate um, you have me on your podcast today. Yeah, we're very thankful to have you here, Dr. Levine. Dr. Levine, um, I'll give a, a little spoiler to our audience. You're an orthodontist. Um, you're in St. Louis. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, how you became a dentist, how you got into dentistry, and, and how that led to, you, to where you're at now? Well, it's kind of an interesting route. Um, I uh, actually thought about going to um, medical school. Um, I was at, uh, at Vanderbilt University in Nashville and and uh, spent a lot of time on the weekends working um, in pediatrics. And when I, at, at, the, at the ripe age of uh, 19, when I realized that unfortunately there were too many children um, dying from uh, oncological diseases, I decided that medicine may not be the route I wanted to take. I then looked to pursue dentistry and um, did that. I was in private practice in Jacksonville, Florida for uh, almost 30 years, and then um, uh, went to the University of Tennessee in Memphis, where I took a full-time uh, position as a uh, director of uh, dental sleep medicine there, along with an orthodontic position, and then most recently in um, St. Louis at St. Louis University, where I'm on the orthodontic uh, faculty within the School of Medicine. Um, and so this is kind of an interesting thing because uh, sleep medicine unto itself has essentially taken me in full circle, starting with an interest in medicine and now kind of concluding a, um, a career um, in dental medicine. Yeah, and it's, um, it's an awesome path, uh, incredible amount of experience, certainly an expert in the field. Um, and we, you know, I've heard this before from experts in, in sleep medicine that, you know, they they do that full circle that you mentioned before. Um, so why don't you talk about your experience um, a little bit in talking to other dentists and dentists that are maybe getting into sleep medicine or thinking about getting into sleep medicine and talk about some of the challenges that they face um, moving their practice in that type of direction. Sure. So it turns out that um, most of the dentists that um, I speak with and, and uh, consult with really find that um, they're going to continue to still do general dental procedures in their dental practices. And they become interested in sleep medicine for various and sundry reasons, including things like a way to you know, increase um, uh, potential revenue streams within their practice. It also opens up their practice so that they tend to become uh, less focused on just the teeth as a whole um, or in general, and instead begin to think more about the body as a whole and the role that sleep plays um, on, on those patients in their practice. So many figure out, you know, they don't really know how to get involved in it. Um, they struggle with the idea of incorporating it in their practices because many of them are busy, you know, holding drills and hand pieces and working on the teeth in particular. And this is a, a you know, a different bird. It's a, an idea where we're really working with oral devices in particular um, that actually treat a medical problem. And so finding routes for adequate education, finding routes for incorporating this type of um, uh, practice within their dental practices is somewhat of a challenge. The idea of just moving from patient to patient and doing a filling, for example, becomes a little bit more interrupted when you begin focusing on the overall health of a patient and how to manage their um, their breathing problems as opposed to just the microscopic look of, you know, filling a tooth and being done with it. This is an ongoing um, uh, a therapy that doesn't, it may take about six months to, um, you know, help uh, manage the the, uh, the sleep disorder breathing problems, but the, um, the, the therapy lasts uh, ongoing. It's a continual therapy uh, for the rest of the patient's life in general. Yeah, and it's um, I think it's a uh, amazing myself um being on the patient side of it, or the consumer side of it, and thankfully I don't have um sleep apnea, but 
um, the idea that compliance with CPAP isn't an issue anymore um, or other types of uh, treatments for CPAP makes a device, I think, amazing from a consumer point of view. And I can understand how that can lead into um, an area where dentists are thinking about bringing in sleep um, treatment as um, a way to increase revenue. Um, and I think a lot of practices do that. They think, hey, I'm trying to, you know, figure out how to increase my bottom line. Here's a good idea. Or, or TMJ, for instance, another another way to do that. Um, clearer aligners if you're a, a general practice. Who shouldn't get into sleep apnea? So who shouldn't be working in these areas? If you're just money motivated, is that kind of a bad idea? And, I, and, and the reason why I say this, I think if you don't have a true passion behind it, you're, you're never going to realize the dollars um, that maybe some go to. I think that that's a great question because I started off speaking about that this is really a dental therapy for a medical um, challenge. And so I think uh, if you're interested in, truthfully, if you're interested in making money in this in, in this um, context, uh, there will be challenges with it. Because what I have found is that um, physicians tend to see very clearly through that through that uh, shade. They realize that, um, you know, they've been working in, in a, uh, an insurance world where reimbursement for them is actually quite low for the procedures that they're doing. You know, the idea of taking out tonsils and adenoids, you would think might be a high ticket item until it's time for insurance to pay. And the risk reward is a challenge for most physicians. And so uh, they tend to see through uh, those um, dentists who tend to get involved with the idea that this could be a, um, a true money-making game. And many of them will um, be reluctant to, to work with those dentists who they don't see as not only just educated, but also a, a, a commitment to the passion of advancing the health of, of their patients. It's important to recognize that, um, at least to date, only physicians really can make this diagnosis. And so even if we are working alongside of a physician to um, recruit patients into our practice, and general dentists actually have a, a much bigger luxury because they have a, a whole pool of patients in which they can begin to um, screen and actually uh, inculcate into a, a dental sleep medicine program within their practice, the reality is the patient still has to go back um, uh, to meet with this physician, and there has to be some sort of ongoing objective assessment by the physician to determine whether the patient's being adequately managed. And so it isn't just a, you know, a one-shot deal. You put this device in somebody's mouth and they're good to go. This is an ongoing thing uh, where um, the physician has, um, really the physician is managing this, and I see myself as a contractor in the relationship. Um, so, Dr. Dr. Levine, so for our audience out there that's listening and saying, hey, I, I, I've been thinking about sleep, you know, getting into sleep medicine, making this part of my um, practice and, and, and what I do, um, what steps should they take next? So what do you think is a good course or a good path um, to get on um, to, you know, gain the, the skills, the knowledge, the wisdom and expertise that you need to, to be successful helping patients with this issue? Sure, that's a great question, Patrick. Thanks. So it turns out that um, dental schools in general really offer very little um, basis for the um, education in dental sleep medicine. Um, we did offer, when, when I was at Tennessee, we offered five hours um, during the third year of dental school, which is a fair amount, actually much more than they receive in, in medical school. So it turns out that most dentists are not going to um, have the uh, previous education to get involved in this. And it isn't so simple as just, as I said, just putting in a device and calling it a day. Really, uh, again, to help the physicians you're going to be working with have some uh, confidence in your knowledge base, uh, you're going to have to demonstrate that by having um, you know, attended different educational programs. I would suggest, and you know, it is a little bit of a bias because I'm um, I am um, the, the president-elect of, of the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine. But that being said, I think our, our academy um, uh, education and what we call the mastery program um, is clearly the most non-biased um, education offering, I think, in, um, in the field. And if um, somebody's interested in exploring something a little bit um, uh, a little bit more tame, perhaps, maybe not necessarily a... Um, uh, a three-part um, series, 
um, then even the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine offers um, ongoing education through annual meetings and uh, other, uh, other seminars and other uh, vehicles of education in which a dentist can begin to um, explore, determine whether they think they have uh, the unique interest that's required in, in pursuing this field, and then um, begin to take additional steps um, in educational processes, either in our academy or in other um, opportunities that exist out there as well. So I want to give our audience really quickly the URL where they can check out um, the, the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine. It's aadsm.org, correct? That's correct. Congratulations on the president-elect. Um, Thank you. Great. I'm glad to have you there. Um, as our, we're kind of running towards the end of our time here, Dr. Levine, what else would you want to say to our audience? What else do you think they could benefit from hearing from someone with your experience today? I think one of the unique opportunities of getting involved in dental sleep medicine really is the opportunity to uh, focus your attentions on managing uh, and being involved in the overall health uh, care uh, uh, of your patients. You can actually make a huge difference um, in, in your overall patient's health, um, cardiovascular issues, um, neurological issues, um, even, um, you know, uh, bed partner issues that sometimes exist in those who have um, sleep disorder breathing or obstructive sleep apnea. So you can go beyond just the idea of something aesthetically making a difference in dentistry or functionally, which is important, and actually having a, um, a much larger um, involvement in, in your patient's overall medical health. Awesome. Dr. Levine, thank you again for coming on today. Let me give the website one more time. It's aadsm.org. Um, Dr. Levine, we appreciate you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for everything you do. And thanks so much, Patrick, for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.